Hey everybody, we're back with the next phase of the 100 ton press. As you can see, I've got one of the 50 ton cylinders here, and this is just so you can visualize what we've got. Uh, we have some, uh, some three inch pipe and some five inch pipe. And the five inch pipe is gonna become the housing that hangs this cylinder upside down from the top of the press. And I'm gonna get over on the computer and we'll show you that in a minute here. Uh, we drew that up in Tinkercad just to give you guys a visualization of what we're gonna do. So we've got a plate here that we're gonna cut some mounting plates from. Uh, we've got the pipe that we have to cut in half because we need two of them because we have two cylinders. We're gonna have to cut some features into the pipe. So there's gonna be some plasma work, some saw work, uh, probably some machine work. We're probably gonna have to clean up some of the holes that are cut on here uh, just to be sure that everything is you know, fitting where we want it. Uh, also, regular pipe, this is just Schedule 40 black pipe, has a seam on the inside. So we're gonna have to probably machine that seam down to get it to fit over the cylinder. Um, they almost wanna fit. I think that seam is just taking up the extra material. And then we have this little puck that came with the cylinder. This is the head that presses. And you see in the top of the cylinder, this fits right in here, okay? We're gonna leverage this and we're gonna fit this to our pipe to give it, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, to give it basically an extension of the ram. So when we get over to the press and this is hanging, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. But essentially this is gonna hang upside down. The ram is going to extend. This pipe will extend that ram essentially, connecting it from the ram to the actual press body itself, pushing downward. So let's get over to the computer and I'll show you what we have set up in Tinkercad to give you an idea of what these are gonna look like and what these parts are gonna become. Okay, so here we are in my Tinkercad account and you can see we have the completed structure and the three primary components that are going into making it, a mounting flange, a bottom ring, and the cylinder body itself. Let's take a look at the RAM housing and we'll talk about the pieces as they go together. So on the top, you see that mounting plate and the mounting plate is obviously two pieces with the cylinder inside. That cylinder is gonna be welded to the mounting plate when we cut the plate out, we're gonna cut it on the plasma machine and we're gonna leave metal between these areas. We're gonna bridge these gaps. And that's gonna do two things. It's gonna keep these pieces oriented in their correct locations when we weld them on. And it's also going to make this a single piece in case we need to machine that, cil that cylinder out of here a little bit. Uh, you know, we're doing the plasma cut. Um, we're gonna measure and put that in there, but should we be off by a few tenths? Uh, you know, we'll have some machining room. Also plasma does cut a bevel, so we might need to straighten that out and hence the tabs that is gonna keep everything in place if we did need to go ahead and uh, you know, machine this out. So keep in mind, we're doing two of everything here. Uh, I only drew up one, obviously, because it's you know, wash, rinse, repeat. Um, but we've got that, so we'll have the two tops. We have two cylinders, and as you can see, we have to cut these to length. We'll have to face both ends. We'll use the lathe for that. Uh, depending upon the quality of the saw cut, uh, we just need to be sure that we're square when we weld this up. Uh, what has to be perpendicular is the mounting plate the interior wall and the bottom plate. So we, we don't care as much about the top of the surface of the cylinder, as long as we can come square and still have enough weldable material on the bottom side. So we've got our mounting plate, our body. The body is gonna be cut on the plasma machine, cutting out the D hole and the, uh, the hole for the uh, connector. And on the bottom here is our ring. And this ring simply supports the ram and allows it to extend through this hole here. So the ring is only holding up uh, the weight of the ram itself. In this entire design, the ram rests inside of here. None of the forces generated by the ram are gonna impact this structure itself. The ram is going to be about an eighth of an inch below this mounting surface. So the ram will have a little bit of room to float up and down. And uh, what that's going to ensure is that when it starts to press on the actual brake itself, the body of the ram will go up about an eighth of an inch and press against the upper beam, and the rest of the force will be exerted through the ram straight down onto the press itself. Then this piece is doing nothing other than holding it in alignment and relationship in space. So we have very little stresses on here. I did consider taking a plate like this and mounting it directly to the ram. Uh, but I, I canceled that idea for two reasons. One is if I wanna weld this to the RAM, I'm gonna have to disassemble the RAM. I didn't wanna go through all that. Also welding this to the RAM, uh, even though it's very, very thick and this is a supporting plate, there is the risk of warpage and I don't wanna induce a, a leak into my RAM. So we're just not gonna weld on it, okay? We're gonna weld this to here. Um, also, if I were to weld this to the RAM, the mounting plate, any subsequent service down the road, 
would be uh, you know, complicated by the fact that this plate is welded to the RAM. If I needed to replace the RAM or take it apart, anything like that, it's gonna have this plate on it. And again, of course, if I had to replace the RAM, I'd have to cut this plate off the existing RAM or create a new plate, weld it to the new RAM, etc. So for serviceability, I decided to make the RAM a floating component. The long slot here accommodates the uh, handle in the body of the RAM, and the front slot obviously accommodates the connection. The front slot was made large enough that if a small amount of rotation occurs, that will be stopped by the handle in this slot, but no matter how much rotation occurs over here, the connector, connector, <laughs> the connector sorry, will never impact any area here, so there won't be any rubbing or wearing. So you'll see all that when it comes together, uh, but there is pretty much the assembled RAM body. So we've got two of these to make. So let's go ahead and get the plasma machine fired up and start cutting out. Okay, I've got this in my hand here, so sorry if there's any jiggling, but you can see our drawings we've got thrown into sheet cam. And you can see where we've bridged here and here, and we're cutting our center ring out of the middle of our piece. So that's gonna give us two components in one, uh, one cutting action. So let's go ahead and export these. Save them, save over a previous, great. And now we're gonna go into Command C and C. All right. Open our uh, tap file. There we go. So we've got it all set up. We've got the metal in the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition the camera so we can watch this cut. Okay, so here we've got our mounting plates freshly off the plasma table. They're still pretty hot, so hence the welding gloves here. Uh, they came out pretty good. Uh, this is 5 16 I haven't actually cut 5 16 on the table before. I'm cutting thicker or thinner. So I didn't really have a setting for 5 16 so I kind of picked my quarter inch, tweaked it, and winged it. So they came out okay. And normally I wouldn't do that, but I knew I was going to have to finish these on the machine anyway in order to get them to fit the pipe diameters. Uh, I just never dialed in my plasma table that tight to fit specific diameters. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff is more like this, mounting brackets and flanges and whatnot, where their measurements are relative to the item that they're mounting, not necessarily to a prefabricated uh, size here. So everything's usually made to fit. So what we're going to do is these, I'm going to stick on the milling machine, and we're going to use the boring head to just square up that circle. If you're not aware, plasmas don't cut straight edges. There's always a bevel. So we've got the correct dimension on one side and the other side where the bevel is is a little bit small to fit around the pipe. So we're basically just going to clean that up and we're going to do them both at once. So we're going to go and, you know, basically bolt them together, put them in the vise, uh, put the boring head in the milling machine and bore that center out uh, to fit this pipe. Okay, the rings that go on top same thing, uh, there's a little bit of a bevel to the edge of the rings. Overall, they came out well. So we're gonna put them in the lathe and we're gonna true up the outside of the rings. Then we're gonna put them inside to true up the centers just to get them uh, cleaned up and prettied up. The centers don't really matter that much since that's just a pass through for the ram coming out. Really all this is is a ledge to support the body of the ram inside the pipe. So we're gonna go get set up on the lathe first and we'll get these two circles knocked out. Uh, we'll come back to the milling machine to do these. 
Okay, so instead of doing something long and drawn out, all I did is push the part fully back against the, the chuck jaws, and we're gonna cut from this side close to the jaw, and then we'll just flip it over and do the other side, because all this is for is so it fits inside the pipe centered. And I just went and did a test, and that is pretty much on to size. So we're just gonna go and clean up these little burrs and whatnot here. There we go, and that should go fit in our pipe. We're gonna go and test fit this over on the pipe, and then we'll just do the same thing to the second part. Uh, so once we know this fits inside, we're gonna expand the jaws and just clean up the inside just like we did here. So let me go test fit, and I'll come back and we'll put this back in and do the other operation. Okay, so here we are. We're switched to an outside grip. We've got it again spaced off the back using our wide parallels, and we're just gonna go clean up that inside. We'll take that over there, get that cleaned up, and we'll put the next one in and repeat this operation for part number two. And then we're gonna go over to the mill to do the rectangular mounting plates. Okay, so we've got our pipe set up in the lathe here, and all this is for is to make both pipes the exact same length. That, that's it. We're just cleaning up this edge. We're not doing anything fancy. But what I wanted to show was this tool. I think this is really neat. You can see this spins, and this is in the tailstock. I know you can't see it from this angle, but there's my tailstock sticking out. You can see we can advance and move it. But what this is, is basically an internal chuck. So as we turn this piece, if I can get my hands in here, there we go. You can see that the shafts sticking out push out further. So it lets us grab things on the inside. I didn't have a center rest large enough to go around this, so we're gonna use the internal chuck. And I rarely ever get an opportunity to use this. And I thought it was a great time to do it, so we'll just go ahead and stick this down in here. Let's get, whoops, we're just going tight here. There we go. Yeah, we'll just stick this down in the bore. And again, all we're doing here is taking a little bit off the edge just to make sure they're the same length. That's it. So we're gonna get this one here, and this is, like I said, the slightly smaller piece. I cut the second one a little oversized on the saw. So we're gonna take our measurement from this with everything pressed in. Then we'll zero everything on the DRO, bring the other one over, and cut it to the same length. So a pretty simple operation overall, but thought I'd uh, share that with you. It's a pretty neat tool and I thought it'd be a cool one. Okay, here we are with our second piece chucked up and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, cut it off to length here. So as you can see, our pile of scrap is growing larger and our parts are getting smaller. Progress. Okay. So what we have done is we have basically put both of the pipe halves on the lathe to turn them to the same height. That height is equal to the cylinder 
plus the mounting ring so that when they're inside, that cylinder is a near perfect fit. I had originally thought about giving the cylinder some room to float in here, and I nixed that idea. I just decided I'm gonna make it fit. That way there's no up and down movement, it's just in one position, all right? So we have our two rings that we cleaned up on the lathe, okay? We move the cylinder aside. We've got our two pipes that we cut to length on the lathe. And what we also did is on the plasma machine, we cut our notch in that I described when we were looking at the CAD drawings. And that notch is to accommodate the handle, okay? So after cutting the notch in, and I'm gonna grab my scrap piece because this is what I tested the notch process on first, is we cut our notch in and it just about fits over here. If this were not powder coated, this would fit. It's the thickness of the powder coating that is actually causing this to stick a little bit, as you can see. So yeah, I could drive this over when we're all done and have this in there, no problems at all. But later, if and when I wanna remove this for any sort of maintenance, it's gonna be a difficult time getting it out. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cut one of these right here. And I was smart enough that when I cut those U-notches, uh, I did it where the seam was. So I didn't have to worry about trying to remove the seam on the remainder of the pipe. So we're gonna cut right in the middle of that notch and there's some springiness in the pipe and that's going to expand. If it doesn't expand enough, we'll be able to pry it a little bit to get it to slip over the cylinder. Once we have it pried to slip over the cylinder, we'll weld up that gap that we created and then our pipe will just be a hair bigger. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as the next step before we go over to the mill and bore out the interior of the mounting plate because the interior of the mounting plate has to fit to the outside dimension of this pipe. And if we're making this pipe larger, we don't know what that's going to be yet. So the next phase is to move some of our scrap out of the way and test the cut on this pipe and our cylinder here. And then once we know our theory works, we'll be all set to move ahead.